Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Fat Girl Life, the podcast. I am your host, Kimberly Pleasia, and tonight I am joined by Star Hansen. How are you tonight? Oh, Kimberly, I'm great. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So tonight we are going to be discussing the importance of kind of removing the chaos that we all have mentally and just decluttering our minds. And I'm going to speak from firsthand experience. I probably need this, but we'll go into that in a minute. Star, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So my name is Star Hansen. I'm a certified professional organizer, but I call myself the spiritual organizer or a clutter whisperer. And essentially what I do is I help people overcome the blocks in their life through using the chaos and clutter that they're experiencing. Because the truth is in our modern world, we're all dealing with this kind of chaos. Like I'm super organized. But it doesn't matter because there's a thousand things coming at us at any given time. So there's this overwhelm that's constantly present. And so my job is to help people kind of like go full matrix into it of like, okay, well, how do we slow it down and figure out where we're going and how to remove the things that are in the way so we can get to where we're going? Well, like I said, I probably need to utilize this personally because I am that person that I seriously just because I work a a full time job. And I run a business that encompasses three podcasts. I have a CRM to organize everything. I have an online calendar with seven different calendars in it. I I have to automate everything or I am completely lost. Yes. And when I hit that moment of being completely lost of... You know, I I had a situation um, the other day where I ended up, well, I, actually it was a couple of weeks ago before I got the CRM. I had like three people booked all at the same time. Oh, wow. And then I had to go through and like play that shuffling game. And afterwards, I think I cried for like 30 minutes because I felt like such a failure because chaos overtook my entire night. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah, totally normal. I mean, so even look at us tonight. So anyone who doesn't know, it's an hour (laughs) later than Kimberly and I are supposed to be meeting. And I don't know what happened. Like when I scheduled, I put down like seven, seven mountain, but I'm mountain standard and you're wait, I'm not wait. I don't know the difference. Why do they have two mountains? It doesn't have two mountains. So I am mountain standard. You are mountain daylight. (sighs) We never move. So we just stay the same and the rest of the world moves around us. And so, yeah. So anyway, so we we're supposed to be talking an hour ago. And so, but the, so the, the brilliance of why this is coming up for us is because we have so much going on in so many things, right? I set timers. I, we use technology to create this. We communicated, we did everything right. Right. But the truth is that there are things that are out of our control. And mm-hmm. the, I think the brilliant thing that you just mentioned, Kimberly, is the shame that comes up there's something wrong with me. I can't believe I did that. It's so normal to feel that. And at the same time, like that is where the juice is. Like that's where the magic is because the truth is why most of us are stuck is because we get stuck in that belief system of there's something wrong with me. I failed. I need, it's me beat myself up for a while. And then by the time we get done with that whole song and dance, who has the time and energy to want to take action anyways? Exactly. Exactly. Cause I had, I'll be honest, had I not found the CRM that I found, and even that I'm still learning. Yes. But it's better than what it was. Had I not found the calendar app that I found, you know, to really kind of rein things in and organize it a little bit, oh, I'd be a hot mess. And I probably would have given up. There definitely would not be a second or a third podcast because just managing guest bookings for one is hard yeah well and then one of the things add, I remind oh sorry go ahead i was just gonna say then you add three times as much 
Yeah. Well, one of the things that I like to remind people with productivity, with organizing across the board is there's no such thing as done, right? I remember when I started my career, I would do TV shows and they'd say, oh, give us a, a, a tip. And I'd say, oh, Ohio, only handle it once. And, you know, it was it's cute. It works for TV. It's a great soundbite. That's not how life works. You create a system, then you tweak that system over and over and over again because you're never changing, your business is never changing, your life is never changing. And we want that. We don't want to be this static creature that never evolves. So as you evolve, the systems change. And fortunately and unfortunately, mm -hmm. what that means is we have to constantly evaluate. Like I know for me, there was a huge shift when I let someone else take over my CRM. That it was literally during the pandemic when, when income went so low, it was the one thing I kept where I was like, I, I can't even wrap my head around me having to handle this by myself. And it's the one expense I allowed for. Cause I was like, this just has to happen because it's so important. You know, it's like, so we just kind of find as we want to scale, how do we take certain things off of our list, which is really in some, some ways the same as automating our home, right? If we, if we set up certain systems so that when we, you know, I don't know, one of my favorite systems is in the closet, right? So if you try on a, a shirt and you don't decide to wear it, it's clean. You throw it into a clean clothes hamper. When you do your laundry, you throw those clean clothes from the clean clothes hamper in with the actual clean clothes, fold them all and put them all away. So you don't have this like giant mound of like growing clean clothes, but it's kind of the same thing. Like we're always looking at our life with, okay, that showed me not that there's something wrong with me, but that I need an, a tweak to my system. I need a new system that's not working. Like like perfect that you said, okay, wow, I had this really like kind of not, not true, but like this rock bottom feeling moment. And then it made mm -hmm. me go like double down on my CRM. So that's what we want to do is we want to spend less time beating ourselves up and more time looking at the system and the solution, because it really is, if I could say the one thing that gets people stuck when it comes to getting or like getting organized and feeling in charge of their chaos, it's, it's really that, that, really hairline moment when we beat ourselves up. Um, if we could learn to process that feeling separate from taking action, that's a game changer. Like it's normal to feel shame. It's normal to feel embarrassed. It's normal to want to make it up to the people that we're engaging with. It's normal to have all those feelings, but we don't want to act from that because everything we do we infuse with the energy we feel. So like you deserve to have your feelings of like, oh man, I feel like I really messed up. Like that makes me sad. I, I feel frustrated. I feel annoyed. I feel, you know, like frightened, whatever it is. And then, okay, I'm just going to like, let myself feel it for five minutes and then like breathe it gone and then take action from there. Okay. What do, and what I like to do is say, what did that make me want instead? So like, okay. So like tonight, like, what does that make me want? Like, I have no freaking, like my brain has no clue what to do with it. I don't even know what time zone I'm in Kimberly. Like, so but it's like, you know what? this in, this incident set us up for a great conversation. <laughs> Totally. We're utilizing it. Find the silver lining. Always. And it is, it's like, what, what is the lesson, right? And if we can look at it from what is the lesson and what, it, and not what, do, what is the proof that there's something wrong with me, which is for a lot of us, like I really struggle with that. So it's, it's something we have to look at as a practice, not like, oh, we're going to have one insight in therapy and it's never going to happen again. You know, I know I still dance with this all the time, you know, like it's a really big deal. Oh, I have far from arrived. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that arrival exists totally. <laughs> if anybody says they have arrived, they are lying. I know. I just felt bad for them. They just like I get it because I think I've had those moments where I'm like, I'm there, and then I'm like, oh, sweet girl, we're never gonna get there. Like, right. That's not how it works. <laughs> I, one of my coworkers actually calls it the "you're so pretty" moment, oh, God. where I'm there, and then her husband will look at her and say, "You're so." We do that to like the boys in my family, like the, my cousins, my male cousins, like, oh my God, you're so pretty. Like, it's like, yeah, <laughs> totally. The very pretty moment. Right. So now what got you into this? Yeah. So, okay. So totally by accident, I was acting at the time and I just started doing this as a trade with friends that, that thought that I was organized. They just looked and they said, oh, you're organized. And I but what was amazing is I knew I didn't love acting. And so I was looking for something more purposeful. And I have always known that I'm spiritual and that I'm a healer. And the minute that I saw that organizing was a healing modality, I was all in. Like, you know, every day and double on Sunday, it's like, yes. And it's just what's be what's brilliant about it is, is organizing is this fusion of healing and practicality. So if you sit in therapy for eight hours, you're going to like process a lot mentally, but you're not necessarily taking it into practice. The beauty of organizing is you start to organize. You have this giant feeling come up. 
you have the opportunity to reflect on that feeling, process the feeling, and then get back to work. So your brain knows, oh, that's how I do this. I don't have to fall apart. I don't have to, you know, you really learn to, to work with it and you, and you have this beautiful external process that you get to lean into. Um, so it's, it's been a really beautiful journey. And so kind of where I became the, the clutter whisperer, the spiritual organizer was really soon after I started, I realized that every single area of your home represents an area of your life and every single object is a little soldier trying to I love that you guys are freaking out because my cat was just trying to like attack me like a second. And that's ago. what they're freaking out about is my cat. I am oh. so sorry. No, they like us when we go spiritual. I don't know. My cat like it. she's like, oh, we're talking about spirit. I'll be here now. Um, so <laughs> we're animal friendly on Kimberly's podcast. Tonight. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. But it's but you know, it's it, what's beautiful about starting to deconstruct the clutter like that is you realize it's not personal. Like there's not nothing wrong with you. I could teach you how to get organized and you could still have these things pop up. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you start to see that, it's like, oh, my clutter is helping me, that this is helping me heal something deeper in my life. Like a friend called yesterday and, you know, said, oh, my brother-in-law is having a really hard time with his dining room. And, you know, I said, look, the dining room's the heart of the home. He just sustained a huge loss in his life. It makes sense that he's having a hard time because he's trying to fill that hole. Like it makes perfect sense. And she was like, oh, yeah. that tracks. And it's like, yeah. So a lot of times what it is, is it's not saying no bad. It's saying yes. And like, it's, you know, it's like the great improv game of like, yes, it's there. And how is it helping me? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And how can I look at this as like, because the truth is, is that once we know how it's helping us, we can meet that need elsewhere, or we can accept that this is just where we are. Like, you know, in this case, my friend's brother-in-law needs that. Like I'm like green light for him making that room a hot mess for a year. He has a year before I even start to worry about it, given the loss he's, he's endured. So sometimes we just allow for that chaos because that's part of the healing process and the journey. So if someone is wanting to try to, you know, organize their life and yeah. get things on track, because obviously we know, you know, life chaos goes right hand in hand with mental chaos. Yes. What are some baby steps for them to start this process? Yeah. So one of the things that, that so, so something I'd like to offer to your listeners too is, and your viewers is um, I have a, a checklist that's 10 things you can organize in 20 minutes or less. Um, and they can get that at starhanson.com forward slash checklist. And why that's important is because most of us have experience by the time we want to, we're on this path of wanting to get organized. And I know very few people who are like, it's my first time. Like if, if I'm talking to you, you probably tried a hundred times. And so it, what happens then is we have this, this history of failure. Like look at all the ways that I've failed and what we need to do is find some wins. And so by doing some really simple um, wins, like quick 20 minute or less activities, like you start to feel like, oh, I actually can do this because part of what organizing is, is it's a rebuilding of trust. And what I did in this with this handout is any of your listeners who do 10 or who do five of the 10 in the next seven days will get a free session with me. All they have to do, and it'll tell you on the on the checklist how to do it. But if they go to starhanson.com forward slash checklist, they'll download the checklist. They'll see the, the 10 different areas. They choose five, do five, send me pictures. And if you do that, you get a session with me. I would love if you would go on to the podcast page yeah. and post that link. Yeah. Put that on there for everybody. So if you guys want to win, a, you know, earn a free session for free, that's how you do it right there. Yep. Easy peasy y'all. Yeah. And it's, and you know, it's funny cause it sounds, I mean, it, like what can one session do? One session can do a lot. You know, it's like that insight with my friend was over text message. Like all I need, like I have 17 plus years of evaluating people's spaces and their stuff and their chaos and their mm -hmm. internal, you know, trauma and all of that. So it's, you know, it can actually do a lot to get you on track. And sometimes just having that insight and knowing you're not alone and knowing that there's nothing wrong with you is all you need to, yeah. to really get there. Because I know you have what it takes to do this. I feel it in my bones. I know every single one of your listeners can do this. It's just they've forgotten or, you know, it's like sometimes you just need a little support on the path and that's okay. Oh, yeah. Totally agree. And it it's okay to not be okay, you guys. Yeah. It's okay that... You know, I'm, I will use myself as the example. I will put myself out there. Like, I am looking at my desk right now. 
and my desk where I work from at home is what I call organized chaos. <laughs> Not sure that that's a real term, but it's what I use. It is. Albert Einstein. But yeah. we'll take I it. have a hairbrush. I have body scrub. I have makeup. I have my cell phone. I have a phone, an empty phone box. Like the phone's not even in the box. It's the box the phone came in when I bought it. Yeah. Um, a second laptop. <laughs> you know, I have everything. Yeah. Because this is where I spend, you know, I spent my entire day. After I got up and got coffee, this is where I lived for my day. And... While it, you know, I'm, I'm able to function because I automate so much of my life. If I did not have that automation, if I were trying to live off paper, you know, like the old planners that we used to use. Yeah. Well, oh God. Too, like let's normalize chaos a little bit, right? <laughs> Everything you mentioned like makes sense. You're using your lip gloss, you're using your hair. Like we're on zoom all day long, right? Like we have mm -hmm. to I didn't brush my hair. Like I just like got done gardening. Like I, I showered for you. Carol. I did shower for you today. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I think you can smell me. Through, you can at least tell if I haven't showered. But it's like I'm brushing my hair before I get on a call. I'm checking my lipstick. Like my lipstick goes in my office, not in my bathroom anymore. Thanks, 2020. And so it's there are certain things that it's like, but but let's just normalize it looking normal. Like it's I think about all those people on Instagram who are like normalize normal bodies, and it's the same thing here. Like normalize normal life. Like yes, it's beautiful to have a Pinterest worthy or Instagram worthy image of your desk, but that is just not necessarily how it goes. And maybe you will get there eventually, but it's kind of versions of it being kind of all over the place to know. Okay, I actually need this. I need this going doing here right and so like maybe the cell phone box goes away but the hair brush and the you know it's like like I always have hair but there's something like I just like that hair and then you build this cute little beauty box that stays and you have the stuff you need and then you know because you might move from one room to another in your house and and I did at least do that like when I started this whole process I seriously had like five makeup bags yeah on my desk now I have a makeup organizer and then one makeup bag. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I I have worked on it, but yeah, I I own my organized chaos. Yes. Well, and it's, <laughs> what, did, what was the saying from Ed, uh, Albert Einstein? Right. He said, if if a if a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, what then is an empty desk a sign of? I have never heard that, but I love it. I think I just massacred it. I do think I massacred. I think he said, "Of what then is the is a is a clean desk or an empty desk a sign?" But it's true. It's like I'd rather you embrace your chaos and love your creativity than have this yeah. like totally buttoned up. Like I'm perfect and have it look perfect, but not functional or feeling great. Like some people love chaos. Some people want to see uh, options in front of them and pick, and it makes them feel good. Sometimes. People feel overwhelmed and exposed when it's too stark, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's true down to our core. I think, you know, that reflects a lot of who we are as people when it comes down to it. Because for some people, you know, they are, they are big and bold and, you know, put it all out there for the world. And then there are other people that are a lot more reserved and subdued. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of times that is reflective of who we are. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the allow, sorry, my cat is now scratching my chair with a sign that she wants something from me. Yes, my love. I see you. I hear you, but I can't do it right now. She's my boss. I call her my boss. Um, but I think that's, I think that's where clutter can be such a powerful teacher because it invites us to know ourselves better. When I work with someone, they don't say, oh, thanks. My house has never been organized. No, they learn to communicate better in their communication style. They learn like how they want the room to look, not how their mom wanted the room to look that they've been holding mm -hmm. themselves accountable to for the last 20 years. It's like, this is your life and you can do whatever you want. And how beautiful is that, that we can start to step into that power? Like I think of it in, you know, 50 or hundred years ago, could I have been, you know, could we have been entrepreneurs? Could we have been working in the way that we are? Could we have been creating? That is true. 
you know, no, like our opinion wouldn't have mattered as much a hundred years ago. They would have been like, oh, yeah. go back to the kitchen, little lady. You know? <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> yeah, totally. so, you know, it's the same. It's like, like how beautiful that we live. Yes. This time is, is crazy. There's a lot of chaos and yes. we have to exactly, like you said, be okay with it, not being okay sometimes. Like, and mm -hmm. just love the hell out of yourself. Sometimes being more productive is not what you need. Sometimes taking a nap is what you need or Netflixing or like ice creaming is what you need. Like nothing comforts me like vanilla ice cream. It's just true. Like nothing like that makes me feel like it's like, it's like mother's milk. It's totally like, I'm like, ah, peaceful. Like sometimes that's reasonable. Sometimes that's not reasonable because I need to take action. But there are times where we want to allow ourselves a moment to rest and just be like, I'm not cool right now. Right. And then, Oh yeah. I so totally did the same thing today. Like, Every once in a while, I get, like, as around the holidays, I love to bake. Yeah. Love it. During the summer, not so much. Too hot. Today, I made a red velvet cake with white chocolate chips and cream cheese icing. Amazing. <laughs> That's what's on my kitchen counter right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. How are you not eating that right? I'd be like, I'm sorry, Star, you were late. I'm eating cake. This is... <laughs> I have not cut into it simply because it is my husband's favorite. Oh. And I'm waiting for him to get home from work before I massacre it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's, but like, and so how brilliant is that even, right? It's like, how many people don't allow themselves to live out loud to say, I made this. I'm really great at making this. I love eating it. Like, it's like, I'll have a tiny baby slice because that social, you know, it's like, no, like, what if we just are who we are? Like, why does it have to be so shameful if we like a little clutter on our desk or if we want the piece of cake or two pieces of cake or it doesn't freaking matter. Like what matters is us owning ourselves, knowing who we are. And I feel like the minute that we really stand in that power, we don't have this, this spin out that comes from the shame spiral when we feel like, oh, me eating ice cream makes me a bad person. And then I do 15 other things to compound that shame versus saying, mm -hmm. yeah, like it was big for me a few years ago when I was like, I make ice cream for gifts. I love ice cream. I will always love ice cream. There's no dessert I like more. And that's me. And I'm tired of feeling embarrassed about it. So there we go. Like I used to shame eat in the closet. Like I used to never want anyone to know that I liked that. And now I'm just like, mm. I don't know who I am. So it is what it is. And so the more, and, and we can do the same with our clutter. Like, why do we have this idea that like the house needs to look perfect? Kimberly, if you invited me into your house and I could have, and I could choose, I would so much rather you invite me in on a day that you're baking because that is you living your life in your house versus when you had just finished spick and spanning it for me and it looks perfect and it will last for an hour. That's not, oh, that's yeah, I, say, I have animals. My house will never be spick and spam. Oh, not, me, not me. My, my animals are so polite. They're so oh. polite. Oh, hi baby. I have never seen her do this before. She's <laughs> I <just changed> offices. <laughs> She's like, Oh my God. This I love it. One. She's my, oh, hold on. I don't want to steal your spotlight. How are you doing, babe? Okay. Where are you? Ah! Oh my God. I'm not a pink cushion. My love, what do you want? What do you want? I can't tell if she's, you know, she gets the night crazies. I don't know if your cat gets the night yes. crazies. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. We she's call like, it FSU mode. FSU? Mm hmm. What's that? F, F stuff up. <laughs> oh, God. okay. Yes. I was like, all right. Yes. She gets her pupils get so dilated. And that's when I know that it's on. Like, I'm like, oh, she is just going for it. And see with our cat thieves, her tail, it's like, it's her tail is having a seizure apart from the rest of the body. Like it's everywhere. And then she'll get really silent and really still. And in that stillness, I know the quiet ones you have to watch out. For. It's going to happen. Oh, and then, or she'll go and like, she'll hide. <laughs> nope. If she's hiding, I know it's coming. <laughs> when I just, I just settled into my this new location for my office and I normally have a spray bottle in here. So if she starts to pull these shenanigans, I spray her and she goes out. I don't have that. So she, the, I guess I've just learned what she'll do. If I don't spray her, she's like, I am the queen. I will climb the walls. Now she's like laying by the door awaiting me to let her mm -hmm. out. Like, Servant. Or to move so she can get your leg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't have pants on. I have a, a dress on. So that's going to be real fun for me. <laughs> I'm gonna well, 
I do have one more question for you. First, I want to thank you for coming on this show. Mm -hmm. But I have one final question. I ask this of every guest that is on my show. What is the one thing that you love most about yourself? Mm, thank you for that question. I love that I am, I love that I'm curious. I love that I'm like unabashedly curious and willing to go down the rabbit hole to discover things, to learn, to play, to grow, to grow myself, to understand the world around me. I love the curiosity that I feel inside because it's a, I think it's a great trait to have in the world, but also a delightful feeling to experience too. Because, yeah. I love that. Well, you guys, we are going to call it a night. Sorry, I had a phone call. I should have turned off my ringer. Um, next, or next month, I am starting a special bonus month. Uh, we will have bonus episodes all through the month of June for Pride. We are going to celebrate Pride and honor Pride and celebrate the diversity that comes with it. So I hope you guys will be part of that with me. I will be back next week. I can't, my brain is gone and I cannot remember who's on next week, but I will post something earlier this week. I know I have two episodes next week, actually. Um, so we will be here next Sunday. There will be two special episodes. They will be on the page. So definitely keep an eye out for that. You guys, if you are getting something out of these episodes, if you appreciate the content that you are seeing, support your local podcaster, buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. Keep an eye on the page. Star will be posting her information. Thank you again for being on here, Star. Thanks, Kimberly. So fun to be with you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.